Hi, my name is Nathan Inglehart, and I'm an animator at Disney Animation Studios. Today, I thought it would be a lot of fun to draw the character Clawhauser from the movie Zootopia. Now, Clawhauser is very special to me because I was an animation supervisor on that show, and one of my responsibilities was uh, leading some of the animation for that character, Clawhauser. So I thought that would be a, a really fun character to draw together with you all. So if you have a piece of paper and pencil handy, We'll dive right in and draw Clawhauser together. All right, so we got our blank piece of paper here and just a regular old pencil. And uh, all right, we are off to the races. So in typical Disney character fashion, we are going to start with a ta-da ball. And you're done. Okay, there he is. No. All right. Let's see. So we're going to start with the ball up here because we want to leave ample room for he's got a lot of meat down below here for his face. We want to leave room for that face and the big smile and maybe even a little bit for his body. So we're going to build everything off of that ball, but just keep this in the back of your mind. So what we like to do next is go ahead and indicate on that ball with a slight curved line because we're thinking about this as a dimensional ball that has roundness to it. And it kind of gives you an idea which way it's looking. We're gonna go ahead for the sake of this drawing, just draw Clawhauser straight on. So the, the first thing I like to do is find the eyes. The eyes are the window uh, to a character's soul so they say and so grounding our character quickly with some eyes you'd be surprised how quickly um, a character can start to emerge from very simple shapes so what i like to do is start with kind of two guitar pick looking shapes kind of sideways almost like eggs or teardrops something like that and you kind of just have them angled a little bit like this All right, this guy looks a little sh small. And no need to worry too much about um, getting it perfect. We're just trying to get some of the basic shapes in there. We can always come back later and draw a little darker on the shapes that we want to refine. So we're going to go ahead and put, we got our guitar picks. Looking okay. And then be surprised when you put just little circles in there it's like oh yeah I'm starting to see a little character come out so that's what I like to do all right one of the next things I like to do is start to draw in a nose and that kind of will help me give an idea of where all the other features are so we'll kind of explore and discover the drawing together as we sort of build out from this eye um, but so Clawhauser he kind of has this little cat-like nose, which is sort of like a little diamond that goes to this V right here for his nose. And then we can go ahead and kind of draw a V like that. It kind of gives you an indication of the front side of his nose. And this is kind of like the top, like that. And then you can draw a little line and you can almost start to see a cat emerging you know, get that very classic cat muzzle happening right there. And then what I like to do is just try to build the, the mouth from off of this line here. And so one of the really fun features about Clawhauser is um, even in his performance, we like to bunch a lot of his features together and it kind of helps with that adorable feline quality. Um, so a lot of his mouth shapes and um, even his hands, he does a lot of acting really close to his face just to try to again accentuate that really um, adorable cat like quality. So what I like to do is start with a little bit of a, a line here. And wouldn't you know it, a pencil broke. That's okay, I got my handy dandy sharpener right here. 
This is what happens when I use my some school pencils. Looks pretty good, huh? All right. So what I like to do here is start with a line going down like that, and then just a subtle break right there at that corner. And a break is really just any time a line changes direction. Not all breaks need to be 90 degrees or 45 degrees. They could be very, very subtle. But that's basically what I mean when I say a break. So... We'll kind of make it a little curved, not totally flat, but a little curved. And then we'll do another break coming up on this side. All right, so now we got a little bit of a smile going on. This is good. And sometimes I like to add a little bit of a crease right here, just to kind of indicate that that flesh is sort of folding over and you can kind of add a little curve to the cheeks here just that those lips are kind of getting wrapped around a bit of flesh. And then you can do the same thing on the other side, a little curve next to the eyes. All right. And then, you can, so you can kind of get just the basic feeling of the expression, which is great. And it's already kind of popping out with just a few shapes that we've got going on, right? Okay. One of the next things I like to do, now that I have kind of uh, the smile, which is great, I mean, Clawhauser, uh, I like to start to figure out his, his jowls, those really big jaw and chin area. So Clawhauser kind of has this sideways D. You can kind of see, even if I just kind of lightly draw in this D shape, you can kind of see D. But if you kind of... Drawing that D shape, well, I made it a little too square here. You can kind of start to figure out some of the proportions again, not being too precious with the the lines, kind of erasing here and there. If I mess up, it's totally okay. We've got a trusty eraser here, something like that. And so this is your version of the character. You can. It's always great to do your rendition or. Um, style of Clawhauser, so it doesn't have to be exact of what's in the movie, but we like to try to get it as close as we can, and that's what we call being on model. Something is a character that is um, uh, looking like uh, itself, especially when you have a lot of animators uh, animating the same character, you want them to um, look like one animator did it. So a lot of times proportions and things like that are very important. So um, now we have kind of a basic idea of our uh, jowls and where they're going to be placed. Um, Clawhauser, is, he looks cute with uh, a closed smile. You can do that, um, but you can also do an open mouth smile. So I like drawing Clawhauser with an open mouth smile just because it just seems a little more fun. So uh, what I like to do is... Um, build right off of this corner and you can kind of see it's almost like a little V in that corner. You can almost make it a little upside down bell shape. You know what a bell looks like. Just like bong, that kind of thing. So we're kind of flipping it upside down and now we kind of have an open mouth, and you kind of want it to be a little more tapered to the, make it a little smaller towards the tip here. All right, look at that. He's smiling at us. All right, so. All right, usually all that meat's got to go somewhere when he opens up his jaw, so I like to put a little indication of a chin just something that suggests that you know when he opens his mouth some of this flesh is getting pushed down and it's there's a there's an effect there if you really want to go fun, have fun you can do one and then even a second one that's kind of fun you can get two two neck rolls in there but i'm going to do the one for now 
So next, I'd like to try to travel upward to the cranium. And we already, what's great is we already have kind of the top half of that ball, so it almost kind of fills in itself. You can kind of build up here, a subtle break, just to kind of start to give a little more uh, squareness to that so it's not an exact um, round ball. And then I like to usually just kind of go into a little, little faux hawk here, a little something there. You can add little splays or something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, kind of feather that. A good note here is um, sometimes when my I get a little too light, dark with my sorry uh, with my pencil, it starts to detract from the main features I really like. Lines like this they start to become a little too loud, shouting almost. Hey, look at me! And when I I really don't want that. I want you to keep focused on the eyes, those windows to the soul. So a lot of times with our characters, you'll notice that we we ground the eyes with uh, an upper lash. Um, be careful not to go all the way around, otherwise it will just look like the character has mascara on. But um, if you kind of ground the character's um, upper lid, at least, you will start to bring that focus back into the desired location, which is right there, right in the middle. Okay, and so at this point, I like to kind of color in the pupil, iris and pupil, and I leave a little tiny space of white for that specular highlight, which is really just that white little dot in the eyes. And again, that kind of gives it, um, when you look in people's eyes, it reflects and light kind of bounces off and uh, kind of gives you a little bit of that dimensionality again. Um, we're not going for realism, but something that's believable. Another way I've seen artists do that um, specular highlight is um, has two little lines, almost like a rectangle or something. Um, and that's okay too. Uh, it's really whatever you find more appealing. I'm going to stick with kind of my circle theme going on here and just kind of a nice little spot there but you can already see that by just re-accentuating the eyes really drawing our, our focus to that section again which is great that's what we want uh, another great area to kind of draw focus is the mouth that's another key area of information where we're going to get to know how this character feels um, it's usually around this time i like to start slugging in a little tongue and you can kind of make a little Almost like a little heart shape, if you want. It's a little, something like that. And sometimes it's cute to add this little tiny nub, kind of little teeth down there, just to kind of say, yep, he's got teeth in there. Sometimes we we don't bother showing the top two. I mean, you could, I guess, if it was really small. Um, as soon as you put a little too big of teeth in there, you can start looking like a different character. And it starts looking a little goofy. So sometimes, just for his appeal and what we would call being on model, um, we would um, want to just hide that just a little bit, just a little tiny. We can keep that. Or no teeth, either way. Great. All right. Well, he needs some ears, doesn't he? What I like to do is kind of look at around where the top of this eye is. It's kind of a good... Uh, landmark for you to kind of do almost like like a like a half of a bell or something um, that's kind of what how I always again more bells um, all the bells and whistles here so I used to just kind of do that so you got two little bells and sometimes just to kind of show that there's like a fold or something kind of add another line like that and I shade the top and that kind of shows you that, oh, hey, there's an underside to that ear. You can kind of do the same to that side and shade that side. Hey, he's got some ears. And we got, I can't forget our eyebrows. So you could always go ahead and do little round eyebrows if you want. That kind of echo what's happening with the lid. That's always nice and appealing and easy for our eye to digest. Or um, something we... We do a lot is 
we'll do kind of a little line, a subtle break. Remember right there. And then kind of just get a little more personality in the expression. Something like that. It's almost kind of like a little, we can do one like that and maybe just one little hooked like that. But again, this kind of break and going wrapping around the head kind of, again, suggests sort of an anatomy wrapping around um, a dimensional skull. And um, there we go. All right, he's, he's starting to pop. Now, just because he's a cat, I like adding these really long whiskers. I'm just gonna whoosh, just because. I think you may even have three on one side and two on another. I don't know which side though. I probably should know. Well, every cheetah's gotta have what? Spots. So this is this is kind of the fun part. We've got we've done all the hard work of trying to get our character um, to be here and alive. So sometimes I just like to make these little dots around the perimeter. It's it's very important that you kind of keep it away from the main features of the face, only because if you start putting a spot near his face or his cheek or wherever or his mouth, um, it could start to feel distracting or starting to compete with all those uh, landmarks that we want to really focus in on. So um, another little trick here is if you kind of do a little half circle, um, it kind of again suggests that dimensionality like you don't you can't even see the other half of the circle because it's wrapping around that cheek now one of the most important spots though is right here and can you guess what this is that is right it's a little hidden mickey ear um it's maybe not as pronounced as that in the actual character in the movie but if you Go back and watch the film, you will find a little hidden Mickey on his cheek. I'm starting to kind of round out these again. I just want to suggest that he's all this, this corner is kind of pushing everything up and sort of making, supporting that expression, that nice big smile that we wanted here. Yep. All right. I think he's got enough spots great well he needs a body you don't see clawhauser's body too frequently in the film because he's behind a desk most if not all of the film so what i like to do is you can kind of just draw really um, basic shapes again his body is probably just gonna generally speaking um, come off like this but I want to be a little more specific. Again, we talked about um, sort of that bunching up that he does. And so a lot of times we would um, make a pose that would suggest his character. So you can kind of draw a couple sausages looking shapes here. We'll bend here. And we can... Let's see. Just try to get an idea of where some of these pieces might go. Let's say if we got a little, little paw here. Oop. Trying to just slug in a little bit of a hand here. Again, I would say hands are probably the hardest thing to draw in animation. And so some artists are just gifted with that. I am not one such artist. So I have to kind of fumble around until I find it, but you kind of get an idea of a little bit of a forearm. You can kind of wrap that around again, suggesting that there's an elbow here and kind of going up into the wrist and you know, having something Again, something that's tight and close to all those features. Remember, the closer you get everything to this face, it's almost the better. Because then, and again, we're trying to accentuate sort of that adorable feline quality. And I'm going to 
Let me do, maybe we could have, again, you could kind of slug these things in pretty roughly. Say that's something like a thumb and um, you're gonna draw mittens. Sometimes mittens help me, you know, you start to kind of think about a hand like that. And this is just kind of a curled over mitten. Sometimes it's not the greatest hand, but I think it will do for here. Again, it's okay to kind of almost get a little looser towards the edge because really we want the focus to be here. So some of this is a little looser, totally okay. So let's just say something like, like this, where he's just kind of balling up into a little, let's see. And then, we don't want this to just be directly off this elbow. We want to leave a little gap just so we know, hey, that's an arm and this is his body. So we're going to do that. And then you can, you know, he's, he's behind a desk, so we don't have to. That's a good thing. I ran out of paper anyways, but we don't have to do that. We could even put a little name tag down here if you really want. Oops. I think that's how you spell it. <laughs> also, something I should probably know. And then he's got a little tie. You can see a little tie looks like triangle and then like kind of like a longer diamond, basically something like that. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of suggesting that. And just to kind of show that, hey, he's not um, without clothes, we're just gonna put a little indication that a little cuff He's got his police uniform on, something like that. You just kind of do two lines that suggest that there. Maybe another line that does that. And I'm, I'm kind of curling it to, again, suggest that there is, that this, this um, forearm has some dimension. So if you had kind of a straight line, um, it would not, it would not um, be as convincing. And then he's got these two little shoulder police uniform in here okay so i'm thinking okay he's he's getting there we can see him it's basically there it's at this point that i like to just tie some of the drawing down and clean up some of these hairy lines over here and we can almost call it done Like that again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it'd be just kind of loose. Just want to make sure that you know these are what these pieces are. I think his forearm got a little stubby, but it's okay. Part of the charm of a drawing is it's not perfect. That's what I tell myself. All right, great. Well, you can add a little nail if you want. This little, it's kind of being a little coy or cutesy. Oh, my pencil says I'm done. I have to trust the pencil here. Maybe just a little something to, little fine tuning tweaks just to kind of suggest, hey, the brow isn't the end of the skull. There's still a little bit of something on the outside there. Maybe just darken in some of these features again to kind of, as I was sort of drawing all the other stuff a little darker. Either I can do one of two things. I can come back over with an eraser and sort of lightly dab some of these things to kind of, the lighter the line, the, f 
that kind of further it goes back into the background of our focus. And the darker, obviously, as I've been saying, will pop. So this is that moment where I'll go, okay, well, what do I want you to look at? And that's what we would call directing the eye. If I did something over here, I would really direct the eye down there. I don't think we want to do that. Great. Well, I am thinking it's pretty close. It's a little sketchy, but what you could do with your drawings, once you're done, is you can always go back over it with marker and start to commit to these lines where you're um, a little more cleanly. And as you're kind of refining these lines, you can kind of finesse the, the structure and the anatomy and make it one nice clean line. Really just try to figure that out. All right. Great. All right, the last thing you gotta do is uh, maybe, oh, you, you could do here, as I see, maybe shade this inside of the mouth just a little bit so you can tell that it's kind of in, there's not a lot of light going in there. Kind of makes a little cave-like. Okay, the last thing you got to do, you can keep adding details all day, but really, at some point, you got to sign your name and call it done. There you have it. Little Clawhauser. Hope you've enjoyed drawing Clawhauser with me today. Happy drawing!